in the riot in a nutshell. This is Holden. What up? He then begins to tell the story of his breakdown, beginning with his departure from Pensy Prep, which he got kicked out of for failing classes. He overlooks the school's annual football game, even though he doesn't even care about it. How dramatic! To say goodbyes, he goes to his former history teacher, Mr. Spencer. He is a little put off by how crippled he is. Mr. Spencer lectures about Holden needing to apply himself. Theme! Holden feels uncomfortable, so he leaves. This is Stradler, Holden's roommate. He shaves with an icky razor, but Holden still calls him a sexy. Stradler makes Holden write an essay for him, where she ends up writing about a baseball glove to represent his brother, Allie, who had died from leukemia. Aww. They go on to talk about how Stradler has a date with Holden's childhood friend, Jane Gallagher. Holden has a blast from the past talking about how much she loved checkers. Stradler comes back from his date with Jane, and Holden hounds him with questions that he nonchalantly answers, causing them both to be irritated. Tensions rise, and a fight breaks out! Holden decides to leave Pensy for good and walks all the way to the train station. On the train, he sits next to the mother of another Pensy student. Holden tells her that her son was popular, that his own name is Rudolf Schmidt, and that he has a brain tumor that's requiring an operation. Lies! 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 Holden wanders around New York thinking of people who he might sort of maybe want to call, but doesn't, until he decides to take a cab to his hotel room. As he looks out his hotel window, he notices bizarre acts in nearby rooms, like a man posing around in women's clothing and a couple spitting into each other's mouths. Gross! Creepy! Still restless, Holden goes to the nightclub because he feels lonely. Another theme! Here he tries to flirt with some ladies who are clearly older than him and laugh at him for trying to seem older as well, so he leaves. He still thinks about Jane a lot. Holden goes to another nightclub where there's a jazz pianist named Ernie. Holden sulks drinking scotch and soda while listening to conversations around him that he finds depressing and phony. Back at the hotel, the elevator man, Maurice, offers to send up a prostitute for five dollars. Depressed, lonely, and flustered, theme, theme, theme! Holden accepts the offer! Sonny the prostitute arrives at his room. But Holden realizes he doesn't want to do the deed, so he lies and pays her to leave. Later, Maurice and Sonny come to his door for the extra five dollars Sonny demanded. Holden tries to refuse and ends up getting mugged. Whoa! The next morning, Holden calls up Sally Hayes to go on a date. Somebody's lonely! As the day goes on, Holden goes to a museum to look for his sister Phoebe, who he really likes because of her innocence as a child. Symbolism! That night, Sally and Holden go on their date. After going to a skating rink, they make small talk. Holden asks Sally to run away with him and live out in the woods, but she refuses and thinks it's a ridiculous idea. Holden calls her foul name, and she runs off. You're crazy! Holden thinks about Jane and decides to call her, but no one answers. Quite upset, Holden goes to a bar and has drinks with his friend Carl, but that doesn't go very well, because he slurs his words too much and Carl just gets annoyed. Holden wants to talk to Phoebe, and he's running low on money, so he decides to risk going home. Phoebe is excited to see him. When she asks what he wants to do with his life, he brings up lyrics from when he had gone on a walk earlier and heard a boy singing about a catcher in the rye. He interpreted it quite literally and wants to be the catcher in the rye of falling children. Hence the title! Phoebe figures out that Holden got kicked out of school and is really upset about it because she thinks her dad will kill him, but she loans him her Christmas money and then he leaves. With nowhere else to really go, Holden decides to go to former teacher Mr. Antolini's home. There, Mr. Antolini talks with Holden and displays his concern for him in life that he's going to have a bad fall if he doesn't really start applying himself. However, he does recognize that Holden is different. After having fallen asleep on Mr. Antolini's couch, Holden awakes to Mr. Antolini stroking his head and is completely freaked out because he believes it was a homosexual advance and he hurries out of the apartment. Dude, no, no, man, no. The next day, Holden goes to find Phoebe, and when she hears about his plans to leave New York, she wants to go with him, but he totally refuses, and she gets very angry at him and storms off. Take me with you! Holden buys Phoebe a ticket to a carousel, and then they have reconciled, and this is where he concludes his story. So as it turns out, Holden is telling this whole story from a rest home. Surprise! Throughout the course of the tale, he had resulted in a breakdown and became sick, mentally and or physically. Recalling these events made him miss all the people in them. That's all, folks! The end.